Okay, good morning. Uh, for those who don't know me uh, yet, my name is Maria Baker and I'm from the University of Southampton, based at the National Oceanography Centre in Southampton. Um, and my background is that I've been working as a PI and office manager for InDeep uh, since, uh, since its inception in 2011. Um, and before that, I was working at the Sense of Marine Life on one of their deep seas programs, which is why I sort of became involved in InDeep uh, from the start. So I do apologise to those of you who've already <laughs> seen a little bit of this. Um, so I will, it will just be a brief overview of, of, of how InDeep came about and also a little bit about where we're going in the future. Um, it was a legacy programme of the census. Um, I think one of the, along with OBIS, probably the only legacy programme that came out of the census um, of the Deep Seas Group. So with this great momentum of collaboration and communication generated during those 10 years, we wanted to continue that uh, in the deep sea community. Um, we've set it up as a long-term program, so we're hoping that this will carry on and on and on <laughs> for as long as possible to keep this community together and to expand the community as well. Um, for the first six years, it's been generously funded by the Foundation Total, who were actually funded quite a few elements in the census, as so they already knew our work through CHESS and through Comage, and they wanted to continue to support <laughs> our work in terms of biodiversity, etc. <coughs> um, from January 2017, ah, we have no funding, uh, but I'm working on it and I've got three proposals to write this week, so I'll be a bit busy. <laughs> um, but, but we're hopeful that, that it will continue, certainly for the next um, year or so and hopefully a long time beyond. What is it? It's actually a global collaborative scientific network and dedicated to the acquisition of data, synthesis of knowledge and communication on findings on the biology and ecology of our global deep ocean. And that is really in order to inform the management and the long-term health of the ocean. Right from the start, Indeed was set up to provide a framework to bridge the gap between scientific knowledge and society, again, in order to contribute to the sustainable management strategies. I'm going to mention DOSI here because there is a confusion sometimes between Indeep and DOSI, even in my head. Um, <laughs> In the beginning, Indeep had a working group five, and that working group five was all about linking science to policy, um, anthropogenic impacts, and, and um, how that affected um, society. And in, I think it was the third year in Indeep, we, we were about to launch this big meeting with science and policy and bringing all that together. And so was Lisa Levin and Elva Escobar on the other side of the planet. So we thought, well, it makes sense to actually combine these two efforts. Um, and so the Deep Ocean Stewardship Initiative was born, and then we removed Working Group 5 from INDEEP. So INDEEP is essentially the scientific um, body, and DOSI uses that science that's from INDEEP and other sources to then feed into policy. Um, so INDEEP, as I say here, played a key role in the creation of DOSI, um, and DOSI at the moment remains under the INDEEP um, umbrella in that we funded a few workshops and things, um, and I co-lead DOSI and uh, also manage the office um, until it's self-funding. So that's something else we're working on with the, with the funding scheme. Within DEEP, I won't read all these names out, but these are the people who are involved at the moment, PIs, an oversight committee, um, and that's been for the first six years. That might be um, subject to change as we go forward, we'll see. Um, and we have three main working groups or research themes within it. And that's uh, taxonomy and mission, biodiversity and biogeography, population connectivity and ecosystem function. And they can see the leads of those programs here. Who's involved? We've currently got 682 deep sea scientists from 45 different countries who receive information and correspond with INDEEP um, via the mailing list. I, th I have a lot of feedback saying that you know, people really enjoy being able to keep in touch with the community in this way, you know, through Deep Sea Life and other, and other things, um, because they sort of, you can get quite lost in your own work, in your own lab, <laughs> and it's quite nice to know what the rest of the planet's doing at the same time. INDEEP is uh, very inclusive. It's open to anyone wishing to participate in any of the working groups at any stage. Um, if someone has an idea that they think would fit into this, um, we're really you know, very glad when people come forward and want to take something forward within INDEEP. Saying that, we're not going to give you any money. There's no salary money for scientists um, or working group leads or participants, but 
obviously great benefits in the collaborations and the products that come out of these, be it papers or, or other products. So currently the core project funds from Total are to run, for me, to run the part-time office for two and a half days a week um, and specific projects um, and products like workshops and that sort of thing. So here's just a list of Indeep office activities, obviously to facilitate the, the regular information exchange via Twitter and Deep Sea Life and emails and that sort of thing. We've got a Deep Sea Experts listing which is um, accessed quite frequently um, and is very useful to folk outside our community when they're looking for someone who works in a specific global region or on a specific um, element, you know, taxonomist or whatever. So that's actually a useful um, <laughs> to have. So works hard to raise the profile of and support the deep sea biology community. Um, for example, we've for the last two deep sea biology symposiums, we've <laughs> and we promote um, deep sea science at meetings, social sessions. Um, a little bit of public outreach. Um, we've been involved in an online open course. Um, an online speaking textbook, which I hope will vamp up a little bit, and we'll get some more input. <laughs> Um, even done a children's book with, uh, with um, Hermione. Um, Indeep Office also facilitates community input to global in initiatives and to have that sort of large base of deep sea scientists in one place and, it, and being able to access those people for, for example, the UN World Ocean Assessment, the first one was done uh, last year, and the UN, the current UN um, PrepCom BBNJ process the International Seabed Authority, Exploitation Draft Regulations, Indeed Member um, Input To, um, and so on. So, brief overview of the work group one on taxonomy and evolution. The aim is to make life of the deep sea taxonomist easier um, and to build tools and networks to facilitate their work. Um, so funds we had, we thought a good, good place to start with a creation of some improved identification tools in terms of the World Register of Deep Sea Species and um, a, a Deep Sea ID app, which Nick will be talking to us a little bit about in a minute. Um, we also have created, or Tammy Horton, uh, NOC, economic expert, a very useful tool uh, for those looking to identify their uh, critters they bring up. Um, and in terms of evolution, the creation of new knowledge on the evolution of life in the deep sea using new molecular phylog phylogenies of deep sea groups. Um, Adrian Glover organized and ran a successful workshop, <laughs> Evolution in the Deep Sea, Origins, Adaptation and Diversity in China, and he'll be taking those um, elements forward. Working Group 2 is the Global Biogeography and Biodiversity Working Group. Uh, with the aim to develop the first global maps of deep sea biogeography based on the biology of key groups. Um, <laughs> led by Tim here, um, obviously the Ophiroids and the Galatheids are the, are the best known um, species, so that's where the work has begun. Um, and it, in the end, the idea is obviously to use this information to feed into management. A uh, nature paper came out this year by Willy et al, Deep Sea Diversity Patterns Shaped by Energy Availability. <laughs> already read it. Um, also working group two um, works on collaborative projects and bids um, and has had a couple of successful bids. Um, there's a cruise happening early next year I believe. Is that right Tim? Um, this expedition uh, 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 on the far floor of Australia's East Coast. And of course um, also leading on this um, OBIS deep sea node and being involved from the in-deeps angle um, to, facil to facilitate this propagation of more deep sea biodiversity data into OBIS. Working group three, population connectivity. Um, again, to basically to better understand the processes driving this population connectivity, um, there's been two review papers out. Um, Anna Hilario and Amy Baco have led those in estimating dispersal distance in the deep sea and also a synthesis of genetic connectivity uh, in deep sea fauna and implications for MPAs. Working Group 3 have also been working on a global recruitment experiment whereby we deploy um, very cheaply made um, su substrates, wood, plastics, um, green scrubbies and carbonates uh, wherever we can. Um, started off on, on blowout preventers with the oil industry and many research crews have been um, putting these things down wherever they can on landers or whatever. Um, and the idea is to actually have a have a general look at 
We've also um, done a little bit of capacity development, development work in Indeep. Our first work to do with the space that we've been deployed, and that was in Southampton, looking at morphological and molecular taxonomy of recruits. Um, and then one more recent one um, in April this year was in Namibia, um, and that was to do with the uh, potential phosphate mining off the coast there uh, in deep water. It was a very successful hands-on 11-day course which the uh, city was involved in, which is nice to see you again. <laughs> so finally, working group four on ecosystem function. Um, the aim here is to emphasize the importance of the deep sea ecosystem, func of deep sea ecosystem <coughs> function and to update on the state of knowledge. Um, and three dedicated workshops have, have produced these papers that have been um, uh, quite fundamental. <laughs> working on a microbial community structure and function in the freezer science product uh, project. <laughs> samples that were sitting around in people's freezers and extracted DNA from these. Um, students have been trained in these techniques as well along the way, which is great, and paper is in progress um, looking at how community patterns relate to function. So finally, for Indate phase three, <laughs> The idea is um, we're going to get some funding, and then we're going to maintain the community network, the community network to enhance communication and collaboration. And that's one of the main aims of Indeep is to keep us all aware of what each other are doing and um, to, to collaborate on future projects. We are going to continue updates to words and the ID um, and make those better and stronger and more comprehensive. Um, moving forward with global mapping. Um, Supporting this new OBIS deep sea node will be a part of deep phase three. Continue with the recruitment experiment, <laughs> down, getting more uh, data back and analyzing those and publishing. There's also ideas to ground truth uh, biophysical models of connectivity going forward in phase three. <laughs> Barcoding, these are all early, early ideas and in early stages. And I can't really tell you much about those because <laughs> they're not my, my field. Um, also looking at um, bringing in functional links between the deep pelagic and benthic systems because we focus quite a lot on benthic systems in Indeep um, and obviously um, well, you know from, from OBIS there's a lot of missing uh, information about the deep pelagic and how that can uh, correspond with benthic systems so we're hoping to bring that up, um, in phase three. Uh, maybe also another idea of sizing the cable array data and ecosystem function a little bit better and to further develop capacity development initiatives <laughs> in terms of deep sea ecology and stewardship and probably will do that look to do that in conjunction with DOSI. Um, another suggestion was deep sea <coughs> going forward in phase three. We've got <laughs> continue to support the deep sea biology symposium which is coming up in um, <laughs> 2018, one after that. And further suggestions welcome, as always, with Indeep. If anyone's got any new ideas about how we might want to uh, take things forward in uh, phase three, then always happy to hear. So thank you very much for your attention. And um, I'm hoping that this meeting will bring a real engagement from the wider Indeep community um, to, to see the massive benefits that we could gain if, if this really got off the ground with this new Obis Deep Sea node. Okay, thank you very much.